Okay, we got this 2000 Toyota Camry. Just got towed in. Just want you guys to listen to the sound of the engine while it's cranking. Um, it's a, a telltale sign usually when you hear this. All right, go ahead, crank it. Hold up. Notice how it seems like it's cranking awful easy without much resistance. We can monitor um, both cam crank correlation. We can also monitor um, current draw versus ignition. There's a few things you could do. However, today what I'm going to, I'm just going to do a quick compression check on it. It's real easy, straightforward. Actually, you know what? Let's pull some codes. One thing I do know about this vehicle is that it stopped while he was driving home. He did have a noise that he heard in the um, around the timing belt area but he had um, an exhaust leak for the last uh, like two weeks he said and then the check engine light came on previously before it breaking down the three codes see what we got okay P0340 camshaft position circuit signal and then you also have a catalyst efficiency below threshold bank one but we know that's most likely related to an exhaust leak that the customer stated but this P0340 is kind of alarming now what we could do we could uh, we could monitor a few things and like I said hook up the oscilloscope and do a couple different tests However, what if you don't have this uh, this equipment? So we're going to actually stop there, knowing that we have a cams at, camshaft position sensor code and the sound of this engine while it's cranking and see if we could base our troubleshooting just off of that. We just start pulling stuff apart and pull the uh, timing cover off it. However, how about we just do a simple compression check? I mean, it's easy to um, see what we have there. I don't see much sense in doing a checking for spark. However, yeah, because it's all electronic ignition, so it's not going to. I mean, we'll tell us some. Let's say if the distributors ran off the cam, and then it, then of course it would uh, it'd be a good idea to check for spark because if that time belt was broken, it wouldn't be spinning the cam, right? But in this case, that wouldn't do as much good. There's so many routes that I would take besides this one, but I'm trying to step it back. To me, it sounds like it has very low compression. And if that's the case, I have a feeling that the timing belt jumped. I honestly do. It's just a gut feeling I'm having at this moment. Just going off the mechanical sound of the way the engine cranks. And what I, did, what I will do for you is we hear what it sounds like now at this point, right? Once we're finished with the repair, I'll disable the ignition and fuel and you can hear what it sounds like after the repair. You get a basic idea of what what we hear and a lot of you guys are probably already picked up on on the sound. Those who haven't, it's a good, it's a good thing to know. And we're just going to pull the number one. I mean, you might be saying, well, how do you know it's a broken timing belt? How do you know it's a slip timing belt? Maybe it's a deeper mechanical problem. Well, you're right. Uh, this one's junk. This one I know is my good one because I even pulled if you watch me before I was pulling my adapter out. Yeah, I didn't think through it.
Sorry for the glare. Yeah, this ain't gonna really tell us much right now. But I do smell a few. Before, when it first came in, it smelled. Even the hose get a little screw in. <laughs> okay. Professional now. Yeah, professional. That was some professional hose screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it keeps getting worse. All right. I'm gonna need you to crank this over, Tammy. Ready? Basic compression tester. Yes. Nada. All right. Now I can do that across the board if you really like me to. Crank it again. Hold up. She don't have anything. There's really not much left to do, guys. Um, other than to start tearing into it. Just off of sound alone, it's pretty obvious to me that this thing either has some major mechanical problem in the top end, which is kind of unlikely, or has a jump time belt. And luckily, hopefully for this owner, this is a non-interference engine and everything's gonna be just fine. However, what we don't know until we get in there is what caused that time belt to jump or what caused it to break or what caused it to do whatever it is that is going on at this point. Very likely that it just hasn't been done in the interval that it was supposed to be done in. That's what we're hoping for. However, this time belt does drive many things. All right, so first thing you want to do is actually disconnect the battery. 12 millimeter. Is my extension up there? I'm just loosening up the tensioner on the alternator. 12 millimeter. We are going to be pulling this alternator completely off. So what I did, I, I loosened it up to relieve the pressure and then I just removed the retaining bolt 100% completely. I might move this coolant hose uh, reservoir. Ten. Just get that out of our way. Right to the way. Are you in the frame? You are, yeah. Just so this was all in the frame? Yes. All right, good. I'm going to pull this hose off here, too. Actually, you know what? All good. Let's get this ground out of our way. Loosen up the alternator enough to get that off, but I just like getting everything out of my way. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. You didn't feel rust or anything, did you? No. Okay. Just like the extension you asked for. Actually, there's just one plug right down here. You're going to take my word for it. It goes down to the AC compressor. It makes me feel better because it was pulling on that wire quite a bit. And I'll just leave that there for now. So hopefully this is just a uh, failed PM, I should say, preventive maintenance. To, uh, so it's got a gate. Gates. Well, actually in really good shape. So, I'll see if he wants to replace them. I, I usually replace all the dry belts. 
However, with the discussion I was having with this owner, I'm not so certain we're going to be putting too much money in this vehicle. And I want to, if I'm going to reuse it, I want to put it on the same direction. All right, next, we're going to take and uh, start removing this, this motor torque bar. It's been many, many years since I've done one of these. Just bear with me. 14. Just for easy. Yeah. Gotta lean a little bit. It's the only thing with working on cars, the older you get, the harder it gets on your back. It's nice having a lift where you can raise the car up to a nice, nice spot. Next, I got another 916s down there, but I'm going to need a regular ratchet for that one. Maybe I can get this better from underneath. But... They say hindsight's 2020. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, want to kill ourselves, right? That's right. We're going to go underneath. This cover. All right, next we're going to take and uh, loosen up this power steering belt. You'll see there's one bolt back there with a 12 millimeter head. We don't have to remove it completely. Sometimes, yeah, there you go. You don't even have to loosen the upper bolt. Yeah, so this definitely had the, the belts replaced sometime soon. Not that it really matters, but I want that power steering pump. Out of my way. As far as possible. Next, you can't see it, but you know that bracket that I had? I started taking the bolts off up top. Well, there's two, two bolts with those 14 millimeter heads on it. I'm gonna take and remove them. And then we're gonna just take and pop that top timing cover off. And that'll give us a window into that timing belt. Not exactly, not exactly what happened, but give us some kind of direction. Sometimes the swivel heads are good, and sometimes you just suck. They suck at life, I tell you, sometimes. You best did not break my knuckle. Ow, that hurt. And I'm gonna finish removing them two bolts, and I'll get right back at it. All right, well, I think I made my job a little bit harder. I should have left the bracket on up top and removed these bolts first because I had the weight of that bracket hanging on that last bolt so I couldn't put my my fingers or hands up in there and spin it. 
and hold the bracket at the same time. But it's off. So we're gonna let it down. And then we're gonna remove that top cover. Yeah, I'm just gonna take it and remove this bracket. Yes, I know I should be wearing gloves. I'm gonna just take and zip out one, two, three, four. Uh, 10 millimeter head bolts here. I just unhooked the, the um, diagnostic connector from over here in the, the harness, just so I get to this last retaining bolt. Close. One more right down there. Like I hold my tools, just two different jobs going on at one time. That is not smart at all. I'm gonna have to hire somebody soon, I swear. That'd be someone special though. Without, without standing over them, you know? And I know there's always somebody that we could teach. Okay. We got it. So we have a belt that... is no longer attached, obviously. And we kind of... I had a feeling. Yeah. But we still don't know. Why? Why? Why is that belt so loose? Ah. <laughs> and why did it snap? That was kind of a, an easy Prognosis, is that what you call it? Or what is it when you already know what the problem is? Diagnosis. I kind of envisioned this before I even got this far, but you just never know what you're gonna find once you get in there. And um, it's very hard to price a job like this or even give a customer a, an explanation to why. I just believe We'll tell more once we get the belt completely off. I'm just going to leave it like this until I get the lower cover off. But I, uh, I just have a feeling it was never done. I really do. I, I, I don't think it was ever done. Just by, just by the looks of it. And you can usually tell when when somebody's been someplace, and a lot of these clips were where they belonged. And like I was mentioning before, when it, like trying to find good help. Nine times out of ten, stuff don't get put back correctly. So, it's a sad truth. However, it is what it is and we just gotta keep digging. Luckily for this owner, hopefully, luckily, it's a non-interference engine. That much I do know. But, we still gotta dig as deep as possible to see if we find anything obvious that might have caused this belt to belt to break. Meanwhile, we're going to place an order for some parts. I'm going to get a whole complete kit that will uh, do the water pump, idler, tensioner, and um, of course the belt, cam seal maybe. Looks like we might want to change that cam seal while we're here. My main goal for tonight, after talking with the customer, is to give them a peace of mind. Well, not a piece of my mind, a peace of mind so you can sleep. Because as you know, when, when your car breaks down and you're stranded on the side of the road for two hours waiting for a tow truck, your mind tends to uh, wander. And then you, you just 
think the best, you assume the worst, and you never know. This, this is one of the worst things that could happen, especially if this was an interference engine. This is something that's preventable. And it would have been a very sad day if this would have happened and it was an interference engine. I see that there's one 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then the rest of them, I believe I get easier from underneath. Before I start pulling the bolts, I might as well get the balancer out of the way. 19 millimeter. This old set. Oh no. Yeah, dummy. See that adapter piece in there? I'll give you a shot of this kit. I know that I wasn't covering everything. So for those of you with curious minds, this is off. Okay. Essentially, and this thing forever. Maco comes with all the different adapters for different crankshaft sizes. And uh, pretty nice setup. Gets your job done, especially on low profile situations. Oh, it's doing well. Probably could have. A little bit different. Yeah. We'll do the same job. We got three bolts remaining. Everything is soaked with oil because evidently something's leaking. We're getting moving. I could pry off that bolt. I'm not worried about that. That bowl ain't gonna go nowhere. What was I thinking? There you go. I break it down. <laughs> Fix the, the oil leak from that time. Seems like a bow cover gasket. See, that's what's bad about these things. It's part of the oil pump. At least the crank seal looks good. I just have to make sure it wasn't that. We're going to be taking this all off to clean it tomorrow. But the oil pump's not froze. Uh, this idler's not froze. We'll let it down and inspect the rest of it. Alright, we can now take in. just broken belt the rest of the way. That doesn't feel frozen. Alright, so now that we have every, well, the timing belt and both covers off, you can see that there's a, an excessive amount of oil. Um, 
it appears that it's coming from up high and then leaking down. So that's telling me, well, we see the front of the valve cover is kind of, you can tell there's some kind of leakage going on there. So we'll, uh, we'll see if they want to replace the valve cover gasket. Cam seal also looks wet, so we might as well change that for sure while we're in here. The idler, tensioner, and the water pump. I recommend changing everything while we're here, especially the seals when you see an obvious leak. I didn't feel anything out of the, or out of the ordinary so far. Crank seal is probably all right, but we could change it while we're there. Everybody's broke and spent their money last month. You know how that always goes, right? Yep. <laughs> Alrighty. We got a phone call to me. Next I'm gonna take and spin the cam shaft. We're gonna turn it pretty much up to where the time marks are close to where they gotta go. Um, not really necessary at this point because I'm going to be removing the sprocket to get to the seal. However, this will give us a feel for the cam and the, the whole valve train. Keep in mind that you're going to be collapsing valve springs and whatnot, so it's going to get tight. It's going to want to spring back. Um, yeah, just keep that in mind. So it might feel like a little tight and then loose and tight and loose, <laughs> but it's just coming off of yeah, like that. Be careful. Pretty close to where it belongs. So what I'm going to do is uh, leave it right there. Pretty much where we got it. I could get in there with a mirror, but we, we don't need to be precise at this moment. We simply wanted to get a feel for that can. Like I mentioned, please be careful because as a, a spring collapses and, and releases, it's gonna, it's gonna want to jump, you know, especially when it gets to that neutral position. You can really clean the wrench or smack your hand. Maybe you make up something to hold that. That sprocket. Well, I got just the tool. Same. Can find space I need for me. <laughs> the same tool that I use for. Same tool that you, you see me using to hold the yoke while we're collapsing the, the cross collar on the rear on the pinion, or even taking the pinion nut off. That's what this tool is made for. Someone asked about it. Uh, Kent Moore, USA. It's a J8614. It's probably older than. Uh, a big percentage of us. It's probably older than me. This was my dad's and I watched him crush many collars with it. And uh, one day it's probably going to be hanging up on a wall. Once in a while it's got to work. It's the ideal job. But all right. What I'm going to do is take two nut and bolts, put it in here. Just gonna stand off a little bit. They sell tools that do just this. Let me make sure I even got enough room. Oh yeah. Okay, the tool of many uses. And you guys seen me use exactly this in this manner before in previous videos. If you watch my my older videos. Okay. There you go. Still pulls through every time. An oldie but a good one. One of those things you can replace with a newer make and model. I'll probably end up showing it up. It just won't be the same. It'll never be the same. Never could ever. Pull this off, be careful with it. That is your reference mark. We're gonna put it, once we get everything cleaned up, I'll mark that with a yellow 
index mark, you know, with a paint mark. Can't really show you. But see, it's saturated all around that seal. So I'm pretty certain that's the culprit. You see how it's all dry right above it. And then you go underneath. And from there down, it's just saturated. Follow it up, follow it up. Bam. Oh, man, it gets dry. Right here we have the tensioner spring. Take note of how you see it. I'm going to shift this over real quick. Might as well take the 14 millimeter. I'm going to take and remove it completely. This is the tensioner. Tensioner. Sounds a little rough there, isn't it? Scratchy. Oh, that's just the oil and the muck and the debris, I guess you call it, behind that there. So, like a rubbing compound, just grinding the surface. In addition, we're also going to replace the idler down below the water pump. I think I could reach that from here. So I really don't have to remove the cover, but I think to clean the gasket easier on the water pump. I used to just remove the three bolts and it saved me a ton of time. Yeah. Next we're going to take and remove that idler. 14. Oh. Sometimes the positions that you find <laughs> that work for you more comfortably than the others might not be the best for taking video because I totally block everything, don't I? Yeah. But no, I'm just I removing that bolt. Right. We're going to do something that's a little unorthodox, I guess you call it, because you really should drain the radiator, drain the block. But we're going to drain everything down past the level of that water pump using a water pump. Drain pans down there. All right, I'm going to remove this cover just to give us better access to cleaning the water pump. So not necessary. Alright, what I'm going to do now is start taking the bolts out of the perimeter of that water pump, leaving one or two in place. For the most part it's 10 millimeter minus one uh, bracket here. Okay, let me set this off to the side. You could simply unwire it, unhook the wires, which I might. Depends on how much they bug me. See the antifreeze dripping already. Probably gonna be the same length. The antifreeze is gonna start draining itself and I'm just gonna let it drain slow. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. She's on the verge of Separating for us, but I'm gonna need my pry bar, like a mediocre. There you go. Look underneath. It's essentially a control drain. And uh, I'll just let it drain like this for a little bit. Alright, she's all but came to a stop. There's the water pump. 
Okay, I use that method just to make it easier to drain it. However, we are going to need to remove this whole housing. But these three bolts actually bolt it to the block. And it, they go through the water pump, through the housing, to the block. Um, you could have just removed them three and left the other three in right here and removed the water pump and housing at the same time. I'm taking pull that clamp back. Still got the pan underneath. Two 10 millimeter retaining bolts right back here. That's a bracket that retains the, the water cooling pipes into that housing. Um, there isn't enough flex in them to get to that o-ring and I want to replace the o-ring on the back side of, that goes to the block. So we're going to take and remove them next. Alright, now that's removed, we'll take and I'm going to spray everything down one more time. You see on this back side there's an o-ring. That's mainly what I wanted to get to. Now you can take chances with it. And leave it to better safe than sorry. Alright, now I'm just going to go and I'm going to clean everything. And then once I get everything cleaned, um, then we'll take and pop that oil seal out. That looks beautiful. Actually take and remove that. Clean out that groove real well.